Hi, Jay Lamar Farron here, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I want to talk to you about 2010. Now, 2010 is a very, very important year. I know you probably hear that every year, but 2010 is definitely an important year for you. Um, you know, our economy uh, and, and our lives have gone through a lot of changes within the past two years alone. And a lot of people have been affected negatively. A lot of people have been affected positively. But however you've been affected, the bottom line is that 2010 is your year to step it up a notch and take it to the next level. All right. And I want to talk to you about 2010 in your New Year's resolution or any goals that you set for this year. Um, first off, did you make your New Year's resolution for 2010? If so, I really, really hope that you're committed to following through on it. I really hope so, because statistics show that many people tend to fade off the New Year's resolutions within the first three months of the new year, never reaching their goals. So basically, by March, people are already fading off of what they set out to do within the new year. And it's gotten so bad that you'll find many experts and many authorities out there advising people not to even set a New Year's resolution. And to be honest, I think that's crazy. I mean, there will be only one thing that would make me agree with that logic, but I'll get to that a little later. What I want to do is I want to cut to the chase and dive into what I want to talk to you about today. And that are three ways that can dramatically increase your chances of not only meeting your New Year's resolution, but meeting any goal that you set. So let's begin. The first thing I want to talk to you about is condition progression. Now, condition progression can be easily explained by simply taking one word at a time and seeing how it applies to your life. So when you think of conditioning, I want you to consider what you do on a day-to-day -day basis that you would consider a habit or a routine. You see, the conditioning of our mind is how we are able to develop habits and routines. Now, this can be a good thing or a bad thing, you know, good habits versus bad habits, right? But the point to all this is to look at how we are conditioning our minds. So what are you allowing to influence the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you think, the way you act, the music you listen to, what you watch on TV, etc.? You know, all of these external sources have the ability to shape our personalities and actions. And as we do this on a day in, day in and day out, it becomes second nature, like riding a bike. You know, you stumble or fall in the beginning, and as you keep doing it over and over again, you begin to do it without much thought. And basically, your subconscious mind has adapted to whatever you taught it or allowed it to be subjected to. So, in order for you to keep your New Year's resolution or any goal for that matter, you have to condition your mind to do whatever it is you set out to do, and it must be a consistent, repetitious effort. Now, as you begin going down this path, you're going to feel strange in the beginning, but eventually you'll get used to it. And your mind or your body, if you're trying to lose weight, Basically, your mind will adapt to it. And I'm sure you heard the saying, practice makes perfect, right? Well, I believe that saying to be very true. And as you continue down this path, you'll reach a point where you get comfortable with the direction you're going or what you're doing. And you have the ability to basically do one of three things. You have the ability to fall back, remain constant or the same, or, or you have the ability to progress. And obviously, you want to progress, right? So in order to do that, you must step it up a notch. You must push yourself outside of your comfort zone you know it's why people say your comfort zone is your failure zone because you can tend to get complacent and off track and this is usually the point where people regress and procrastinate they get lazy they go back to their old ways and that's why it's very it's very important that you continue to push yourself outside your comfort zone often in order to take your life or your business to the next level all right the next one i want to talk to you about is friends, partnerships, and associates. Now, friends and associates, they can make or break your ability to reach your New Year's resolution. All right, my mother used to always say, <laughs> you are who you hang with, or I don't want you hanging around so-and-so because they're a bad influence. And of course, when I was younger, I didn't understand, and I said to myself that, you know, my friends don't determine who I am, nor should I be told who to hang out with, right? Now, notice I said I said it to myself, not my mom, right? <laughs> However, as I got older, I started realizing that she was absolutely right. You know, when you set out to do a goal, depending on the type of friends you have, they will either support your goals or blatantly reject them. Now, support of your friends or lack thereof can shape the decisions you make in life without you even fully realizing it. It could push you towards your dreams or steal your dreams within an instant. Therefore, it's key that you pick and choose your friends wisely. And if you have friends that are currently holding you back from your goals, even though they may mean well, 
You need to make new friends. I'm not saying dump your current friends. I'm saying make new friends. Spend time with people who are like-minded and have either succeeded at what you want to do or are definitely going in that same direction. These are people that you want to partner up with. These are people that you want to reach to. These are people that you want to get advice from. All right? You'll get ahead a lot faster and it will greatly contribute to your condition progress. The last thing I want to talk to you about is planning and analyzing. You know, it's easy to say that you're going to go after this goal or you're going to go after that goal, but how are you going to do this? You know, just winging it will most likely always fail at whatever goal you're going after. Don't try just winging it. You know, you might get lucky, but do you really want to take that chance? You not only need to know what you want to do, but how you're going to do it. And as you make your goals, it needs to be as realistic as possible to you in order for you to achieve it. And the only way you do this is by making, you know, to-do lists, making schedules, having mastermind meetings or, you know, really, uh, you know, mind provoking meetings with your partners and your friends and associates where you guys can basically leverage off of each other's experience and take, take each other to the next level. All right. You can learn from each other and you also want to set de deadlines. All right. That's definitely crucial to your success. Setting deadlines is huge if you want to condition your mind to take in small and tightly focused steps towards your goal. Now, it's definitely easier said than done, and even people who set down deadlines tend to fade off after a while, and this is most likely because they aren't seeing the results they want to see. Maybe they're not sure how to plan out their goals, and this is when you need to reach out to your friends, your partners, and associates and ask for help. You know, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Not only that, but you need to have points within your deadline, preferably before the deadline, where you can analyze what you are doing. If you're not making your daily, weekly, or monthly goals, then what can you do to, in order to ensure that you do? If I know I want to lose 30 pounds in one month, right, which is about 7 pounds a week, and I don't achieve that goal, I need to analyze what type of exercises I did, how many sets and reps I did, and also what I ate. Then when the next week comes, I can tweak my plan in order for it to be more advantageous than the previous. That's what you want to do. You always want to be able to go back, tweak your daily, your weekly, or your monthly goals in order to make it more, you know, progressive than it last. All right? It's all about progressing towards that goal. All right? So in conclusion, all right, in conclusion, I believe that conditioned progression, associating yourself with the right friends and partnerships and associates, along with proper planning and analysis, can truly help you reach your goals in 2010. It won't be easy, but in the end, you'll feel so much better knowing that you made a declaration to the world on what you wanted to do in life and you actually achieved it. Then when people, the people that try to hold you back in life, when they see your success, they'll give the next person good advice based upon your success. So when you think about it, reaching your goals not only affects you, but others around you. All right, I wish you many blessings in 2010. I want you to have a happy new year. I want you to make it happen in 2010. I want you to make this year your year to succeed at whatever goal you put your mind to. All right. Oh, and, and the only way that I agree with those who you know suggest not making New Year's resolutions is if you're not serious and you're not committed to reaching your goals. Right. If you're not serious and you're not committed, you're not the type that won't you know will follow through. Then what's the point of setting a goal? Think about it. Life is what you make of it. You know, your decisions shape your future, all right? So you start making better decisions for a better future. Get out there and make it happen for 2010. Whatever goal, I don't care what it is, lose weight, get your financial situation together, be happy, uh, you know, take your business to the next level. Whatever your goal is, get out there, make it happen. God bless.